This is the second webinar in the Cultural from Home webinar series. Uh, the Europeana Communicators is a, a specialist a community of our Europeana Network Association, and we are made up of communication professionals, um, not only from libraries, I presume we have a lot of librarians here today, but also museums. I myself are from a museum, galleries, archives across Europe and beyond. So I'm very interested to see where the beyond is here. Marie Teresa, hello, my dear. How lovely. From Rome. <laughs> um, and our, the point of our communication, um, our communicators community, is to strengthen the digital cultural heritage sector by promoting digital cultural heritage in action. This is what we're doing here and supporting each other um, so that we can all become the best communication professionals that we can be. All right, I'm just trying to change slides. Okay, so this is our second in this particular series of Culture From Home. Um, and I'm, I'm worried that you are all zoomed out from what's been happening over the previous few weeks because I, I don't know about you, but our life seems to be on Zoom these days or webinars of one sort or another. Um, and it's extremely tiring. You know, it's not like meeting real meetings and real people where you get together and have a cup of coffee and you kind of nudge each other and look each other in the eye. It's actually very tiring to look into a screen. So all of you who are all zoomed out, yet you are still with us today. I appreciate that. We pre our, our, presenta our presenters appreciate that, that you're here. Um, and I know that you're gonna have a terrific session because we have three terrific um, presenters. But just so you remember that this is part of our series. Um, this is the second one, as I mentioned, and we've got a few more planned uh, from April to July. Uh, the next three will be um, on archives on May 26th, education, June the 11th, and then uh, following that will be sport. So plenty to look forward to. So don't get too zoomified and uh, stay with us. Um, and just some housekeeping now, uh, just mute your microphone and at the end of course when we have a conversation you're welcome to jump in. And please remember that this webinar will be recorded, is being recorded, and parts of it will be made, we'll probably edit it and then parts we made online. Um, so if anybody wants to join um, the conversation but don't want to be seen, you can turn your camera off or if you really want to be secret, um, you're very welcome to rename yourself. You just double click on your name and you can change your name and you can be anybody you want. So if you're being recorded from now, you're incognito, which is probably not a good thing for communicators, but it's a possibility. Okay, so once you've enjoyed our session this time on uh, libraries, please join us, the, the European Communicators, and the link is here. And now Beth is just putting it into the chat. Thank you, Beth. She's lovely, it's Beth. Um, and at the end, we would greatly appreciate your feedback. So there's a very brief Serbian monkey uh, chat, uh, and then you can um, just make your comments. That helps us understand who our audience is and helps us uh, rethink and, and improve ourselves for the next webinar. And of course, tweet, 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 tweet. And our handle today is Europeana Communities, which reflects our community. So as you're listening and you're taking everything in and you're enjoying yourself, then please tweet. Um, so a little bit about the questions and how to interact with us. During the webinar, you're very welcome to ask your questions through the chat in Zoom. So you don't need to leave the chat. You don't need to leave Zoom at all. Um, so keep the questions going and Beth and I will keep an eye on your questions and we will be able to see what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, at the end of our webinar, which is about an hour, we're going to have a Tana Libera Tutti, which is lovely, which is a free for all basically. And the session will be kept open here for more inform informal discussion. And you're all invited to stay and join in. So remember that part will not be recorded and it won't be made available. So you're free to put your real name back and put your camera back. And we will be delighted if you all stay here and take part or even just listen in. And it'll look a, an opportunity just to interrogate our speakers and ask further questions and hear from you what projects you would like to share with our community. You can do so either in the, in the chat now and we will be 
um, record, not recording the chat, we'll be saving the chat and editing it. And all your projects that you would like to share with this community will be uh, made available in the, in the PowerPoint at the end of the session. And uh, your input will be very, very, very welcome and uh, then shareable. Um, so I'm Susan Khazan and I'm moderating today. And I will introduce to you our speakers, so Marion and Luisa, and then afterwards, uh, Sophie. So we have two sessions here. Uh, each time is 15 minutes, questions afterwards um, that you can ask your, your speakers. And I now would like to introduce my first speakers. Just find my paper. Okay, so I am really, really happy to invite um, uh, Luisa Torres and then um, Marin Ansel from Galica BNF. Um, Luisa Torres is a medieval manuscript curator and amongst her activities over the years, she strived to make heritage co collections better known to the public. And in that spirit, she's joined the Galica team of community managers four years ago and has been one of the humans behind its Twitter account. So no, she is not a bot, she is the real thing. Um, and Marina, um, Marianne Ansel manages some of the, Europeana, the European and international projects of BNF, and she's joined the Galica social media team about two years ago, where she's active both on Facebook and on Twitter. So over to you, uh, Marianne, Luisa, thank you. Thank you, uh, Suzanne, for this introduction. Um, Thank you to the UPANA team for having us and good morning everyone. Um, before we start uh, the presentation, um, we wanted to uh, give you uh, a bit of uh, an insight about the BNF in general and to tell you uh, what Gallica is and where you can find it online. Let me try. I think you may find that when you click on the screen, there's a lag, so don't click too much. Ah, okay. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, about the DNA. In terms of uh, the digital prisons, uh, the DNA as the particularity of having many websites and different uh, social media accounts. So to give you some background, uh, there are two main accounts, uh, the ones related to the DNF as such. So it, it is very uh, broad and uh, they encompass all the, activi the activities of the libraries. So through them, you can learn about the upcoming exhibitions, uh, the latest project, uh, a scientific conference that is planned, but also if it is a busy time or not to come to the library when it is open. Uh, what is Gallica in all of that, <clears throat> you may ask, but Gallica is the digital library of the DNF and of its partners. Um, Therefore, in terms of the editorial line, uh, the digitized collections are always the starting point uh, and the focus for Gallica. In terms of organization, it is important to say a few words. Uh, we work as a team, and at the moment there are nine persons in this team uh, from all over the library. We take turns uh, being in charge of uh, different channels and we rotate on a weekly basis. basis. So we share the load. And with Luisa, we have been uh, designated uh, the spokespersons for the team. So where can you find Gallica online? Well, first and foremost, Gallica is a digital library. So the main entry point is the library. It is already 21 years old and it has over 6 million items online. So even though uh, our strategy is focused, there is a lot to do. There is also a blog 
uh, that allows to go deeper into the, de the documents and to give more content. The authors are some of our colleagues, but also uh, partner institutions and researchers. Um, with six million items, uh, it's not always easy to, to find your way. So there are various entry points on the, on the library, for example, for a type of documents, maps, newspapers, etc., but also for themes, uh, that is to say thematic collections, and we call them selections. On the social media, uh, the Gallica team is very active on four different platforms. Facebook, uh, Twitter since uh, 2010, Pinterest, and uh, more recently Instagram uh, for about two years. And finally, there's the traditional newsletter. So we've, um, in this presentation, and um, with Louisa, uh, we are going to try to take you on a short trip back in time and uh, we will try to present how um, Gallica's digital strategy has evolved over the past weeks and how it was adapted to the changing circumstances. And by circumstances, uh, I of course mean the ongoing uh, COVID-19 crisis and the lockdown. In France, for some background, um, the lockdown was initiated in March. It is uh, slowly being lifted since yesterday only. And like in many countries, it all happened really quickly. From the beginning, um, the whole team was involved and active. Uh, we discussed collectively about the adaptations we felt were necessary, but we kept our usual organization and weekly turnover. On the screen, uh, you can see a quote from um, a book, uh, Voyage autour de ma chambre, Travel around my room, uh, from uh, Xavier de Mestre, written in uh, 1794. Um, I, read, I will read it to you. I undertook and carried out a 42 day trip around my room. The noteworthy observations I made and the continual pleasure I felt along the way compelled me to make them public. Uh, this quote uh, seemed to us the perfect example of what our digital strategy was going to be, to be like over the lockdown period. And this strategy can be summarized in three points. A continuous adaptation in order to be useful but also to stay in tune with the events and with the current mood. Uh, it is worth mentioning that uh, Gallica is not acting in isolation. Uh, in France, there is a larger initiative named Culture Chez Nous, uh, Culture at Home. Uh, it was launched by the French Ministry of Culture uh, and uh, uh, it is a, a website that uh, aggregates uh, all the online services from about, from about 500 glands. And it is also a hashtag that, is, that has been consistently used uh, since the beginning of the lockdown. So I will now leave the floor to Louisa to carry on our journey. Thank you, Mariel. Um, so our action began actually two days before the official lockdown, um, which um, was uh, decided and announced on a Monday and active from Tuesday at noon. Um, you have to imagine over the weekend, the confusion and, and relative panic of the whole country before the official lockdown because for one thing it was election day so they weren't the government was not announcing the lockdown but everybody knew it was going to happen all of the newspapers were leaking information about what it was going to be some true some wrong um, so there was a general sense of 
of anxiety and that something really catastrophic was hanging uh, over our heads um, nationwide. So with the number of deaths growing and the anxiety about election days and the schools uh, closing, the BNF was already shut down to the public, but we did not know yet uh, that it was going to be shut down for uh, the people too. And amongst this confusion, um, we, the team, the Gallica team, we soon understood we had a role to play. We actually had a responsibility. Um, you may know, if you follow us from, uh, on, on Twitter or Facebook, that around Gallica, we gather a strong community of loyal, loyal and faithful followers um, who play with us interact with us frequently know that when they ask questions we will be there to answer um, and they were in this time reaching out for us because of the great confusion that reigned because the fact that schools were closed but we didn't know yet how we were going to organize because parents knew that they would have to keep their kids at home but didn't know what to give them to do so they were reaching out for us so that's why we uh, immediately responded and actually spent a whole Sunday um, gathering a number of resources, everything we could think of that would be of help to people. Um, as you've been told before, I have been in the team for three years and I was actually scheduled to be behind the Twitter account that week. And it was a crazy week, uh, I have to tell you. So the first the tweet that you see uh, on screen is the first of a series of tweets and it was the one that we launched um, on the very first day of the lockdown um, gathering whatever we had uh, that we thought was going to be useful and it was the first series of tweets that we would decline uh, theme by theme uh, afterwards this was actually a thread um, where we thought of our epubs to be read uh, on kindles and several uh, reading items um, our conferences, because we have a wide choice of conferences to be seen or re-seen. Um, obviously our treasures to be shared, because we thought we might, uh, it might be expected of us to do some, uh, you know, to enhance uh, treasures and, and, and put forward um, pedagogically um, some of our best and most well-known mo monuments. But we also thought of the pupils in the schools gathering resources for them to study, uh, aligning on the official lines of program um, that they are supposed to study over the year, over, over the, the course of their year, their, their study year. And obviously a lot of things for children um, with our activities and our most beautiful stories that we could uh, offer them. Um, after that, we did several focuses. We also, we did a more strict focus on the resources for parents, um, obviously because as there was a crucial need uh, for parents to get things to do to occupy um, their children. And um, we did also a strong uh, focus for researchers. Um, obviously a library uh, is the main tool for a researcher. Um, so at the time when every library in the country university libraries, national libraries, um, town libraries, city libraries have closed down. The greatest, the biggest, the largest uh, digital collection of the country, the one that gathers over 600 partners, national partners, was going to be the central point um, for them. And as it happens, we have a lot of um, resources, a lot of, um, useful documents uh, within our pages that not all researchers knew about. The fruit of long and consistent uh, campaigns of digitalization of uh, useful resources um, that most of the time are under other form, paper mostly, um, provided by university libraries, um, but that came to be very useful when you could not access um, the, your university, your usual university libraries. Uh, so that's the main point 
at the beginning was to be useful, to be useful, to be useful, to be useful to everyone, to be useful to a large number, to be useful even to the people we don't talk to most of the time. Um, greatly helpful in that was all the work done previously of editorialization of the library. The famous selection pages that we talked to you about. Um, because obviously within six million documents, you can fairly assume that you are going to have something for everybody. Anyone who needs anything will find that something in our library, but will they find it easily? Not being experts, perhaps not being students or university teachers or anybody used to finding researchers within a library. We know the librarianship is finding information is at the core, at the center, at the heart of our librarianship uh, advocacy. Thankfully, we did have those pages where we had uh, built up easy access, easy entry points to several, um, to a great number actually of resources. And these were absolutely precious. So these times have actually uh, given a special highlight on this uh, long-term work. One example, the EPUBs. If you look for an EPUB, if you just decide to search all EPUBs of Gallica, there are several thousands of them. You are very likely to find a number of EPUBs that have absolutely no interest to you. Maybe not even be literary, but if you look for one of our entry blogs, one of the most read, which states 150 literary treasures selected by the Ministry of Education in France, uh, by their experts, uh, so specifically designed to be useful to students and to constitute a sort of um, general culture basis that everybody would need to. Well, there, you only have to choose between 150 books that you know are going to be all useful, entertainable, profound, or considered important. So that was um, what we did, how we used uh, the uh, resources we already had at hand. Um, obviously, the second, uh, the second line of our action, uh, the second thing we had in mind, uh, thank you. Uh, the second thing we had in mind all of the time was to be in tune, was to be cautious, was to be uh, attentive. Um, practically, it means to be there, not to plan ahead your publications on the social media, as you sometimes do when it is safe, uh, to actually be there and check that at the one moment you are going to tweet something light, to, uh, you are going to tweet some treasure, you are going to tweet something, some you don't do that right after the announcement of the death of a politician uh, or a famous singer, such as we've had in the country. So be there, be behind. And in a way, our account, which is the work of a team, uh, which has and always will remain anonymous. Um, for example, I am on Twitter and nothing on my Twitter points to the fact that I am behind also uh, the Gallica team. And this is an anonymousness that we really, um, uh, find very important. Um, behind all that, it was important that nevertheless, there would be a human voice. There would be, you could feel that there was somebody uh, behind that would respond, that would be there, that would accompany you. Um, and being in tune, over time, we perceived slightly a change in the atmosphere of the social media, which was very tense and dense and anxious at the beginning. And over the time, over the weeks, as we all got along um, the quarantine, as it extended, as the lockdown reached two weeks, then three weeks, then one month, then two months, and everybody found their new habits, and everybody knew what they do, and everybody got their lives back together and, and got in the mood uh, with the quarantine. We perceived a lighter uh, mood, and people developing creativity to fight boredom. So that when we launched, uh, we enhanced uh, treasures, evasion, uh, and also um, games uh, a few weeks on uh, into the quarantine. 
Um, some were universal, uh, searching for eggs uh, on uh, Easter day is a French tradition. I don't know if you have it in your country. I do believe some countries do have it also. Um, the emoji uh, game has been all over the place uh, since the beginning of the lockdown. And at some point we just jumped in. So we saw whatever people were doing to fight boredom and whatever people were doing to fight um, the desperation that comes with isolation uh, in the quarantine, and we jumped in, uh, truly which also is something that requires a great energy and a big engagement in, your, in our part. Because for instance, for example, when you launch an emoji uh, game, you have to be behind. You have to be, first of all, you have to prepare it. Then you have to test it with your family, correct whatever they found really impossible to find. And then you launch the game and you're behind your screen a whole half a day, a whole morning, uh, because people launch uh, answers at you and you correct them and you, congratulate them and then they give their own guessing games and then you enter the game. So it really is an engagement uh, on our part. Louisa, excuse me, I'd like to jump in here now um, because you're, you're creating quite a, store, a stir with the audience and there's quite Sorry. a few questions. No, we have lots of questions for you. So would you like to go into the questions or have you another screen you want to share to wrap up? Um, we wanted to show you a few new projects, but we can do that very quickly and then go on to the, to the questions, if you wish. Well, it's your choice, because you've got a few more minutes, so whether you can take the people's questions or leave them to the end or use your time for your presentation, it's up to you. You, you have a few more minutes. Okay. Um, I think it would be good if, yeah, if Mario showed you a few things that really stirred the audience. Yes, very, very briefly. Um, we, we also thought it was important to have a certain form of continuity. So we carried on projects that had already been started before the lockdown. And you have on the screen an example of one of them, uh, a project that we launched uh, mid-April. Um, it's about the Gassini map, um, which is a, a famous and well-detailed map of the 18th century. and. Uh, it was good to to have it uh, to launch to launch it during the lockdown. It gave us a, a certain sense of normality, and it was also also a success because it allowed us to to engage a lot with our community uh, online, and also the the younger audience. But we already discussed about it, so we we will not go into uh, much further detail. Um, we, we reach out a lot more to uh, our younger audience than we usually do, but that was a, a necessity and it was, uh, it was also um, a good time and a playful time for us to do that. And the last thing we did was um, all playing along with whatever people were doing out of boredom during the uh, quarantine was to play with those filters on Instagram they have which turn out as questions that turn very rapidly and give you some kind of answer as some kind of guessing game of who you are. And so we did one with the, which Gallicus cat are you? And it's been, it's actually reached a great success so far today. 13,000 people have tried it out and almost 1,200 people have published uh, the results on their own social media. So yeah. So, so that is a, a figure we are uh, very proud of. Incidentally, um, Instagram, our Instagram reached over 100,000 uh, followers, um, talking about statistics, um, this, uh, during the period, so we're very proud of that. Um, and on the hill, as you can see, uh, visitors, online visits, have reached uh, levels uh, unreached before. Um, the two curves that you see, the one, the low one is obviously the one last year and this year. So last year was about um, over the same period of 30 days since the lockdown. Uh, one million five, sorry, 1.5 million visits last year and 2.5 million visits already um, uh, during the, lockdown, first, the first month of the lockdown uh, with uh, peaks at 87 thousand uh, people in during one day which was reached uh, two times during the first weeks uh, of the quarantine so um, I think we can safely say that uh, we have 
uh, been useful to people as the figures show. I think that's all we wanted to say. So if you have questions, um, please uh, shoot. Yeah. Yeah, I think what we'll do is take questions. Uh, I'd like to read you the questions because you've stimulated lots of discussion here. But I just want to make one comment of my own. That's an awful lot of responsibility to be the face and the voice of a library and of the National Library and of librarians and the whole kind of sector and doing this anonymously. And you're obviously not a robot, not a bot. Um, that's very impressive. And, and obviously your statistics of shown that, that you've doubled your reach and that's really incredible. Um, I suggest this, this all should be uh, in research um, so that we understand what's been happening over these last few weeks that uh, how, muse how museums and libraries and archives have gone into first gear to make themselves open, available and accessible at this crazy time. And the response, the amazing response you've described. So let me just leave you with a few questions um, for both of you, Louise and Marian, uh, for the end, um, so that we can then move on to our next presenter and we'll come back to your questions at the end. So uh, Christina, uh, our own Christina from our communicators uh, community, um, your comments were, have you resigned, have you reassigned some tasks to your staff during lockdown in the library? Um, and also, do you think there'll be changes, structural tasks and strategies in your library in the post-COVID time? Well, I'm not quite sure what post-COVID time is because we're still very much in COVID time and everybody needs to take a deep breath and rethink it. But a couple of more questions uh, from Tamara. Um, where did the initiative for the action come from? That's a very interesting question. Is it from the BNF management or inside Galica? That's from Tamara. And again, from Christina, what social media channels do you think were the most efficient um, in during lockdown? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram? Well, you, you sort of answered that, but that's something that I think everyone would like to get back to. So allow me to, into, thank, both, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Very impressive, very exciting. And uh, for the two of you, I mean, how many other people were in the team and how many people busy typing away, you know, responding and listening and talking because, it's a ton of work and um, to make things successful the way you did it was quite remarkable. So we're here, I hope we'll hear from more from both of you in the discussion later. But I think it's time now to go to Sofia, uh, Sofia Claren Zadrovec um, from the Croatian Institute um, of Librarianship, the National University Library in Zagreb. Christina, are you ready? Yeah, you ready? Um, as a coordinator of the team responsible for digital library development, we'd like to hear about uh, other things that you're doing um, as a member of several national teams, uh, your responsibilities for digitalization of cultural heritage, long-term preservation, and your role in the creation of digital library development. Um, many, many projects and a lot of responsibility, including virtual exhibitions and trying to make trying to provide new and innovative services for your users. So yeah, not isolated with a book. Fantastic. Christina, let's hear from you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm pleased to present to you an overview of uh, National and University Library in Zagreb uh, activities in the last two months uh, during the coronavirus crisis and the uh, lockdown of the library. So, We've, we had some uh, great plans for 2020, including Croatia's presidency of the Council of the EU, European meeting, and so on. But uh, on the March 19th, the library was closed, and uh, we continued to work from home um, on our activities, core activities, uh, but this time uh, exclusively in a digital world. Um, in the beginning of the crisis, uh, as all other libraries, um, we were promoting our existing uh, uh, remote services, such as our digital collections, virtual exhibitions, mobile apps, and other services made for our patrons, pub publishers, and librarians. But we were keen to do more. 
um, surrounded with uh, a lot of stressful news with uh, daily uh, reports and uh, numbers uh, but also with a lot of uh, disinformation and uh, false information um, we were uh, doing our best in uh, providing uh, reliable sources of information to our patrons and promoting uh, facts and, uh, and science. Um, we were very active in uh, web archiving and building our thematic collection on coronavirus and COVID-19. And um, we have also started to encourage our users to find out more about pandemic crisis in the past and draw them into uh, deeper research. Um, the tone of our communication was, was not always serious, of course, uh, but we wanted to add a little bit of emotion and uh, humor. So we preferred to promote uh, such digitized material um, uh, packed in small uh, Twitter stories or uh, blogs. Uh, we were glad to hear that the Croatian Minister of Health recognized the value of digital libraries and museums and promoted them as a virtual place or service that can help in uh, reducing stress. Um, in the last two months, the whole uh, GLAM sector in Croatia has moved in the online environment, finding innovative ways to communicate their content to the audience. At the same time, Zagreb was rather empty, but I would say that uh, the culture, the heritage was even more visible during our safe walks through the city. Um, without people on the street, we could see better its rich heritage, its architecture and city arts. So um, it was uh, great to see a creative use of a national uh, library souvenir uh, the net warmer uh, made from a postcard in one of the National Library Digitization Project. He was here used as a prote protection mask. But uh, walking on the Zagreb street, uh, streets became really, really unsafe on March 22nd. Um, a lot of buildings were damaged in the earthquake and uh, including uh, museums and libraries, especially our great museum of arts and crafts and uh, several uh, library buildings. Uh, so with the uh, coronavirus uh, and earthquake crisis, the library, the library has again promoted the reliable sources on, of information and also historical material on 80, 1880 Zagreb earthquake from its uh, digitized collections. Um, we were summing up the damage at the National Library and uh, 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 with the Croatian Library Association, uh, we have uh, immediately started collecting data from other libraries and offering help. Um, we have collected an archive website on Zagreb Earthquake in Croatian uh, Web Archive. My colleagues are very, very active these days. And uh, we promoted uh, also uh, awarded the mobile application Greetings from Zagreb as a great um, um, link or tool for interaction, um, um, in, emotional link, in fact, uh, for interaction with the 10 uh, Zagreb uh, locations. 
Um, while working from home, National Library Virtual Exhibition uh, Platform was a perfect tool to express our creativity and teamwork spirit. Virtual Exhibition Portal was the most visited portal with biggest increase of visits. Uh, the portal serves as a central access point for uh, virtual exhibitions and uh, seven new uh, virtual exhibitions from other libraries were published on the portal in the last two months. Uh, my colleagues from uh, Print Collection, National Library Print Collection, completed uh, this um, virtual exhibition and they have just started to create a new one. They are also very active. And, um, uh, with the Zagreb City Library, we have started collaborating on the Zagreb, uh, Zagreb Virtual Exhibition. Also, we continued our work on a Danube Virtual Exhibition with our international partners. And also with the researchers, we worked on Marin Getovic. It's a famous Croatian mathematician. Uh, and we, pre we are preparing uh, an uh, um, story uh, exhibition about him. So, uh, partnership, cooperation and solidarity uh, are very important in the time of crisis and the National and University Library and um, our uh, digital lab has supported and promoted a Croatian Students Council in 3D printing of protective equipment. We uh, have also prepared se uh, six guidelines for the National Library uh, and other types uh, of libraries uh, concerning working from home, reopening libraries, reopening uh, study rooms. Uh, we prepared some uh, new webinar webinars and use the old one. And um, in uh, April, uh, we focused on education and entertainment for all uh, by presenting our new color books with the timeless treasure from our print collection. And also um, we created the jigsaw puzzles uh, for whole family free activities. Uh, they are created from Easter postcards. And also there are a lot of um, uh, puzzles from uh, um, our cartographic collection and uh, print collection also. And uh, uh, here is uh, a map of Europe as a puzzle, jigsaw puzzle. On uh, April uh, 23rd, we celebrated the World Book and Copyright Day, um, uh, organizing the ninth Creation Book Night. It's a national annual program that promotes uh, book and reading. Uh, every year, uh, the opening of this manifestation happens uh, at the National Library, but this year it happened on uh, the national television and online. Uh, so more than uh, 400 book night programs were organized in the libraries. And um, as every year, we found out uh, more about uh, uh, reading habits in Croatia. On uh, April 27th, we have started gradually reopening National and University Library, organizing some new ways of uh, returning books of circulation process. As you can see here um, on this poster uh, created by our colleagues from Preservation Department, uh, teamwork, uh, creativity and humor were very important for our institution in the last uh, two months. Uh, to sum up our activities, in the time of uh, coronavirus uh, and uh, Zagreb earthquake, uh, there is an overview, not really <laughs> good presentation of the hashtags, of the uh, Twitter hashtags of the library and my colleagues. 
um, the broad, broad analysis will show the keywords um, most used in the social media communication of the national libraries. So um, at the end, I have to admit that uh, we haven't accomplished all our plans, uh, but uh, we will continue to work on some ideas. Um, and um, so thank you. Be safe. Sophia, thank you very, very much. Uh, and uh, you've taken an awful lot of responsibility and great leadership there. I have to say in preparing this webinar, I went and had a look at the stuff that you guys, all of you guys have been doing, and I got caught in your jigsaws and I started playing your jigsaws and having a wonderful time. And I sent them to all the family and they continued playing. Um, yeah, this stuff is important. It's important now, but it's always important. Um, and I'm just wondering um, what we can learn from this period and how we can take this very sad, but very important critical experience to the next stage. Um, and I've got a couple of questions and perhaps uh, we, can, like, we can take turns like Marion, um, perhaps answer this one, and then Luisa, and then Chris, uh, and then Sophia. Um, the sort of ideas that the questions are coming up in the, in the chat, which I think is important. Where does the initiative for this action come from? So I think that's quite important to think about. So where, where did all this creativity come from? Would you like to answer, Marion? Or Luisa, who, who would jump in here? Um, I, I can start. Um, it's a... Uh, it's a collective work. Um, we all have, but the thing is that because we we are we are a team um, and we come from all over the library. Uh, we, I mean, the, the social media uh, they are not our main activities. Uh, so because of that, uh, we. Um, we we all have different backgrounds, so we all have different ideas, and and just putting them together, it it can it can bring new idea and and we build on the ideas of one or the other. And Luisa, would you like to add something now? Uh, yes, I would add that we were obviously coordinating very tightly with the. Um, the main uh, communication team of uh, the institutional account lab ENF. Um, we at the very beginning shared a sort of root sheet of what we were planning to do, um, insisting on the fact that we did not um, write up a schedule because we wanted to be to feel the mood of the room, take the temperature of the room of the mood before we tweeted every time. Um, but that we were broadly going to be doing this and that and enhancing on this and that kind of topics. And they would bounce back on us. And um, so that's how we coordinated. But yes, I agree with Mary on the, um, the team aspect um, is, very, uh, is very important. Yes, and it, it goes also, out, it comes from outside the team as well, because when you look at the, the blog, it is, uh, it is very lively and it is very broad in terms of, of topics. Uh, you have games for kids, but you also have a series of blogs on the um, uh, Parisian hospitals as a, as a kind of a tribute to our, our care system. You have so this morning, it is, a, it is a, a, an article very much uh, in tune with the news. Uh, it is about the wearing face mask over the centuries. So, it, well, it, it's a large community and we also uh, take from this community. Thank you. Um, a couple of questions from Sophia. Thank you, Mary Luisa. Um, from our Peter, chair of our um, communicators community, Peter Somers. Um, a, a question for, for Sophia. How did you keep up the good spirits after being hit by an earthquake as well? And did, how, did you, how did you manage to take your breath? back again. Two well, terrible things in such a short time. Yes. Um, well, you see uh, every day on the, on the news, uh, stay at home, please stay at home. And then earthquake uh, uh, happens. And then uh, you must not stay at home. So what shall I do? Should I stay at home? Or should I go out and be safe outside? So uh, it happened early in the morning at 6.24. 
uh, most of people were sleeping, uh, most of people were at home, and that was really the lucky because of that. Corona, in fact, saved, I think, a lot of lives uh, in Zagreb. And so um, it was easy. We were uh, sending, uh, we were uh, posting some emotion, emotional posts at that time. But uh, um, we knew that we also have to 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 uh, uh, fo focus on again on uh, uh, fight against fake news because uh, you can't predict earthquake. So there were some rumors like with Corona, uh, a big earthquake will happen in two hours, so and so on. So we knew we had to do what librarians do, uh, direct our uh, users to uh, reliable sources. And uh, uh, as my colleagues uh, said, be responsible, be useful, and uh, give them some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, stuff for destruction. Uh, not, uh, you said that, uh, uh, new products, uh, uh, color books and uh, puzzles uh, uh, were, good, were very good for, for that uh, uh, destruction from the news and, uh, and the uh, really bad news at that time. Um, everybody is saying to you, all three of you, if you'd like to read the chat, congratulations to all of you because you, you, you've done amazing work and uh, it's really impressive. Um, we can all learn from this. Um, and uh, I, I like the cat actually, the, uh, <laughs> what was it? The, um, what 13,000 people as Beth picked up, the, Gallic, the Gallica cat, if you can hear some more about that. What, to all three of you, what were your most successful of these endeavors? What, what's your takeaway at this point? We're not finished yet. We're still, some of us are still locked down or partial lockdown, and this is not behind us yet, and we're still on a learning curve. But at this point, take a deep breath um, and perhaps start with um, Marion and, and Louis. So what have you learned from this? What's your best, what's your success story of all the things, all the different things you've done? The color, the color books. Mm -hmm. I would, yeah. I don't know, Marion, what you would say, but I would say the color books. Um, Gallica is a digital library. We have all types of public, um, a lot of researchers, but they know their way around. A lot of curious people interested in, in national heritage items, old items, medieval manuscripts, Art Deco, Illustrator. Um, but we don't speak that often to parents with children. And I believe our color books, um, they were already there. We already had the selection pages ready. Um, but I believe they attracted vague interest, curiosity and amusement. Um, it is very different when you're a parent at home and you can't buy a color book for your kid, but you have a Zoom meeting in an hour and you really need to keep them quiet and what can you do? You already have a computer and a print, and oh God, color books. Um, I, I have to say, most of the people I know that don't usually go on Gallagher, that's not because I'm a librarian, that they do all the things I do. Um, all of these people I sent the color books to have used them and were very happy about it. Uh, I think the color books have been seen 32,000 times. Uh, and the paper toys, uh, which is one of the selection pages that we'd specially created during COVID time for the quarantine, uh, because it, like, it was one of those ideas we had back in the head, uh, but it became a priority as soon as we entered the lockdown. Um, we're seen 40,000 times. So they papers that you cut and then you, you build and they make little sceneries and, and planes and trains and that sort of things. Uh, so that would be um, my my own success story, which I have nothing to do about because I'm not. I don't. I, <laughs> this is not the collections that I care that I take care of. So it really isn't my. So it, it really is a team a team job. But good good job to my colleagues who had the fantastic idea of digitalizing that a few years ago. 
Um, thank you. Yeah, I think I'm going to look up your colouring book, essentially, and see if I can send them to my family. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, this is a specific question from um, uh, Andelija. Uh, Sophia, what was the response of your followers on social media during your Osten Ostenidama action? I'm sure you know what that is, because I don't. Um, and did you also get a large number of followers and a bigger reach in that specific uh, action? Um, in fact, uh, uh, as, as colleagues from uh, France said, uh, uh, there was some uh, uh, existing uh, uh, services before, but uh, we promoted them uh, better during this uh, time. And I have to uh, give you an, ex an example that our uh, puzzles uh, have a growth of 2000 <laughs> percent well but that's that's because there's uh, three uh, uh, we had in the beginning we were so hard that users didn't love them so they didn't visit that page but when we put these easter puzzles and uh, uh, others uh, they came and they uh, use it very much uh, i noticed also that our um, um, uh, repositories, for instance, TVs and also uh, Croatian web archive, uh, was not so uh, was not in the focus of our users, but uh, uh, our portals with uh, heritage material from uh, fifty to two hundred and seventy percent uh, more users, uh, more visits in the. Uh, um, last two months compared to first uh, uh, January and uh, February. So, did I answer the question? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's also impressive. You know, we, we, we often look at numbers um, because that's a reflection of, you know, of our goals. But if you touch one family with one jigsaw or one coloring book or one cat, then you've, you've touched the entire life. And that's, that's important, it's the quality, it's not the quantity. We value our quantitative research, but we know we are talking to real people and we're getting real, we're, we're touching people's lives. I mean, I'm taking on this, we, it's, <laughs> you did the work, but um, it's, you must be very, feeling very proud and um, uh, appreciative that we are in positions like this, that we can actually make a difference. So this has kind of made a shift of library, libraries and hopefully libraries and we'll hear in our next presentation our next webinar from archives who are also working extremely hard at this time um, and i hope you will join us again um, but it's really we need time to reflect and see what we've learned and where we're going and gather the pieces to listen to our audiences and and how they've responded um, i just like to say to all three of you chapeau all the work because it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, I'd like to continue this conversation uh, in a minute. Hold on a minute. I have some housekeeping to do. Um, so for all of you people, uh, yes, Roxana, I agree. Congratulations to our three speakers. One, it's very, very, um, what's the word? Um, inspirational that uh, what has been done. Um, so let me ask everybody who's new to our community to join us and there's some links here to join the Europeana communicators community you're very welcome um, and it would be very helpful again if you fill in our survey monkey and of course tweet as much as you can um, because this is a way that we can uh, augment our reach um, and hopefully um, uh, other people will be able to join in and learn from our participants learn from our community uh, we will document, we will promote, we will tweet, we will keep this action alive. Um, it'll be, it, this pre the presentations will be on our website. Uh, you can access uh, all the links that, that we've seen that, that we ran through so quickly in this very quick hour. Um, and you can uh, then go back quietly and uh, pick up the thread and continue.